Hello everyone and welcome to my review of Jujutsu Kaisen chapter 114. So, this chapter isn't too eventful compared to last week, but we do get some very important stuff towards the end of it. So anyway, we pick up where we left off right after Toji killed himself and his body turns back into the grandson. And, um, Megumi is just confused as to what the hell just happened. He's thinking back to Navido calling him Toji, and Toji saying good for you before killing himself. Um, but his side's kind of hurting from getting, like, stabbed by Toji, and he's like, I don't have time to think about that, I got to get to Yeri. And on second thought, I should actually go make sure Maki and the others are okay. They did get lit on fire a few chapters ago. Um, but before he can do that, he gets slashed from behind by that fucking dickhead with the hand sword that Nanami beat the shit out of, uh, in chapter 100. Um, so unfortunately that guy's regained consciousness, um, and he's just typing himself up about how happy he is to attack and maybe kill someone. Obviously Megumi's not dead, um, so we're gonna see what happens with him. And now we get back to Panda and Kusakabe, and they're just searching around through all the buildings to look if there are any civilians or anything, even though Inumaki got all the civilians and transformed humans to go away. Uh, Kusakabe is saying, hey, what if there's like some scared kid hiding in one of the buildings that we missed? Whoa. Would you want to take responsibility for her getting like traumatized or something if we didn't save her? And Panda's like, yeah, I guess you're right. And inside his head, Kusakabe is thinking, now, I really just don't want to go to B5F, because I'm going to fucking die if I go there. Uh, so, I, I believe Kusakabe is a new character. We haven't really... I don't think we've seen him before, like, doing anything. I'm pretty sure he was just introduced in this arc. Um, but he seems pretty neat. He's, like, chewing on a lollipop or something. Um, anyway, um... He's just getting more internal monologue about how he doesn't really want to go to B5F by himself, or the fewer people around, the sharper Panda's nose becomes, he might end up going to B5F by himself, but I want to avoid that too, because I don't want to be alone in Shibuya right now, which is a pretty good point, because there's just a whole lot of terrible in Shibuya at the moment. Um, and he's just thinking about how um, uh, Panda despite not being a human, is more humane than he is. Um, and thankfully, since he's a panda, he has a really terrible sense of direction um, and doesn't realize that the Fukutoshin line is literally around the corner if they go from the ground level. Um, and that he's just going to keep trying to buy time by pretending to be lost. Um, and after all, these people managed to seal Gojo and that there's a bunch of huge cursed energy appearing and disappearing, so he really doesn't want to mess around with this. Uh, Kusakabe seems like one of the um, characters, you know, when you're reading a series, like, um, the best example I can think of is from Chainsaw Man, that one dude that quit in, like, chapter 20 after a bunch of people started getting shot, and he was like, nah, I really am not suicidal, so I'm gonna turn in my resignation. I kind of get that kind of vibe from him. He's sort of the, uh, yeah, I know I'm in, like, an action manga, but I'm really not interested in getting immediately killed by some high-tier, uh, cursed spirit. But anyway, there are these two figures that appear, and they're like, hey, you're Jujutsu Sorcerers, right? And I have no recollection of who these people are. I guess they may have shown up. I haven't read Volume Zero in a while. I need to do that again, because I know we had, like... Ghetto's whole gang of disciples. Um, and I really can't remember who they are. I don't know if these are new people or not, but they look pretty cool. We've got some dude who's covering his eye because he's got like a scar or a burn. And then some pretty lady who's doing the don't have my arms in the sleeves of my jacket thing. So she's probably a huge badass. Um, and they're saying, just surrender. I really don't want to kill a sorcerer. Um... Kusakabe saying, I don't want to be killed either, but I can't really say sure. Um, so, um, please tell us a story, or tell us your story, and take as much time as you want. It, it, they're really playing this up how um, Kusakabe is someone who's got like a pretty good survival instinct, and that he's not interested in doing this battle manga shit, because he knows like 
he, he, um, he seems to have a pretty good instinct that he's, like, not up there with people like, um, Gojo. Or well, obviously not with Gojo, but he's not up there with people like Mei Mei and Nanami. Um, presumably. I don't remember if they actually told us what, uh, grade of sorcerer he was. I'll probably have to go back and check that. Um, but we find out that these people are Ghetto's former disciples. So that's why I'm going to have to check volume zero again to see if they were in it. And we see here that they're talking to the other two girls that got murked by Sukuda last week. Or not last week, two weeks ago. Um, and they're having some argument about Ghetto's body having been taken over and what they want to do about the imposter. And they're getting into a big argument over it. And we also see there's some dude here with like a heart tattoo or birthmark over his chest. Um, and they're just having this whole big argument over it. It seems like with the absence of Ghetto, they really have no idea what to do. Um, and when one of them tells Nanako to act like an adult, um, she gets offended and takes out her phone, which is what she used for her curse technique. And then the dude, they have a really androgynous face and they have a, a headband and hard things over their chest, so I don't know. I will refer to them as they. Um, they tell them to stop and how Ghetto wouldn't want them fighting like this. No matter what, we're a family and um, the day will come when we break bread again. Now, unfortunately, since Ghetto died, these people are getting wiped out, or at least they're starting to get wiped out. I have a feeling Sukuna is probably going to tear through these people. Um, but Kuzukabe is like, shit, they already finished the story? Um, well, um, I'm going to take my time here and avoid any fights with special grade curses. And he takes out a katana. And as he's about to unsheath it, we have the uh, name for it, the new shadow style, evening mood sword drawing. Um, and apparently him drawing the sword is significant. So either his technique involves the unsheathing of the sword, or it's like, uh, what's it called? Iaido? It's the shit Virgil does. I mean, like using the unsheathing of the sword as an attack because it's super fast or something. Maybe something like that. Um, but we don't get time to see it because everyone's interrupted by this huge emergence of cursed energy and then buildings start exploding. And we see this double page of Sukuna up in the air having just demolished Jogo, like his eyes whited out, his eyes glazed over and he's got blood coming out of his mouth. Uh, and Sukuna's like, is that all you've got, Cursed Spirit? Um, so, um, I thought that Jogo was maybe, maybe strong enough to lay a finger on Sukuna. But apparently, their difference in power um, with Sukuna having 15 of his fingers is so massive that he got fucking off-screened. I feel bad for Jogo. I, I, I really underestimated him because... The only, like, two times, other than going against uh, Gojo in the subway with all the other high grades, is he's going against the strongest people in the series. So the first time when Jogo was introduced, he fought fucking Gojo. And that was where we were introduced to the Infinity Technique and the Immeasurable Void. And he just got trounced. He never stood a chance. And now, what do we see when Jogo's on his own again? He's fighting fucking Sukuna, who is in the running for strongest, I assume, because he's already super strong. Like, he's literally trouncing a high grade at 75% of his power. Um, or, I think 75, or is he at um, 80 already? I don't remember if he has 15 or 16 fingers. Um, but yeah, he, like, it's unclear... If full-powered Sukuna is stronger than Gojo or not. I mean, Gojo said in, like, the second or third chapter that he could take on Sukuna if he was revived. 
Uh, he was like, yeah, I mean, I'm the strongest Jujutsu Sorcerer, so I could, I could probably take him on. Um, but man, the only time that Jogo has really done anything impressive is when he ambushed a battle-weary Maki, Nanami, and Naobito. And when he was fighting with the other high grades. And even then, he wasn't able to do anything to Gojo. They were literally just buying time and had specifically crafted the circumstances in order to be able to seal Gojo and prevent him from using most of his powers. So even though Jogo is like clearly super powerful, he keeps fighting people who are way out of his league. Like he's 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 just he's messing with the wrong people every single time he shows up. He just can't catch a break. And he's probably going to get killed sometime soon. Like if Zuno really is just going to go on a rampage because uh, Jogo couldn't beat him. I mean, he says that that all you got. So I guess their game isn't over yet because he gave him a minute, I think. So it's possible that this is actually a juke and he's going to touch Sukuna at the start of the next chapter or some shit. I don't know. Um, or he's really just going to get wiped here. So um, I guess Jogo will be forever doomed to be one of those anime characters hyped up as being super strong, but always fighting people that they're a terrible match for. What can you do about it? So if I had to guess what we're going to see next chapter, we'll maybe see Sukuna's Rampage, maybe? Um, I really feel like we won't get back, I, like, I bring this up, like, literally every chapter, but it's kind of important, uh, since it's Mei fighting the main antagonist, or, like, the main antagonist so far. I don't know if you'd really consider Sukuna the main antagonist, because he's just kind of been an absent background thing for most of the story so far, and he's within the main protagonist, so, like, Ghetto, Imposter Ghetto is the main antagonist, really. Um, and Mei Mei has been off-screen with him for, like, 20 chapters now. Um, so, I, I don't think we'll see that until we're done with everyone else. Until all the other loose ends have been tied up, and everyone's like, All right, let's go unseal Gojo and beat Ghetto. We'll go back, and we'll probably see that she's been totally murked or something. I don't know. Um, next chapter, what will we see? Either, um... Maybe what Megumi's doing with Han Guy, possibly, um, or where Nobara and Inumaki are. Since we already see where Panda and Sakabe are, we may have them getting back together. I feel like now the main concern of everyone is going to be Sukuna, since he's out here in the open. Um, this will give an opportunity for. All of the other side characters to come together and maybe try and stop him or something. But he's probably going to murk. He's going to tear through the rest of Ghetto's disciples. They are screwed. We also have to remember, where the hell is um, Mahito? I just realized that. Mahito has been gone for a while now. Oh god, he's probably going to have some kind of surprise entrance. Um, but I think next chapter we're going to see Sukuna wrecking everything. Uh, but yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I do Jujutsu Kaisen videos every week. If you enjoy other series such as Record of Ragnarok, Chainsaw Man, Kangen Omega, and Bleach, I do videos on those series as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around.